All right, this next lecture is going to be on the reproductive system. And so uh, a little bit about the reproductive system, whether you're talking about males or females, there are sex cells called gametes. So in the male, the uh, gamete is the sperm, and in the female, it is the oocyte, or commonly just known as the egg. So these sex cells or gametes are what we call haploid, which means they actually have half the number of chromosomes of normal cells, which would be called diploid or diploid. So we're going to start with the female reproductive system, and here is an overview of it. So the primary organs of the female reproductive system are the ovaries. So there's two ovaries. Accessory organs include things such as the uterus, the uterine tubes, also known as fallopian tubes, the vagina, and also mammary glands in the breast. So let's start with the location of the ovaries. And you can see they're lateral to the uterus. Here's the uterus. The ovaries are here and here. And they're suspended by ligaments. There's a ligament called the broad ligament, which is this sheet of connective tissue. Suspensory ligament kind of suspends it in space. And then the ovarian ligament is actually connecting it back to the uterus. So if we look at an ovary, if we look at this picture right here, the outermost part of it is known as the cortex, just like anything else in anatomy. And then the innermost part in here would be called the medulla. So going around the cortex, you, you have all of these <clears throat> round structures. These are actually called follicles. And the follicles are going to contain the oocytes or the eggs. So taking a closer look at the follicles, uh, so a given follicle in the ovary consists of an oocyte, which is an egg surrounded by cells called follicular cells, and there's different stages. So the four major stages <coughs> include primordial, primary, secondary, and graphene. <coughs> a graphene follicle is the mature follicle, and that's the one that the egg is going to be released from during ovulation. So as we go through these, there's a couple things to pay attention to. One, what it looks like, and then secondly, what type of oocyte is in there. So what I mean by what type of oocyte, eggs or oocytes go through stages uh, and as they develop. So it starts out as a primary oocyte, and when it's a mature oocyte, it's called a secondary. So you're going to see that change as it goes through these different stages of the of follicular development. So starting with the primordial follicle, this is the most uh, immature type. It has an oocyte that's known as a primary oocyte, and it's surrounded by one layer of flattened cells. So there's not much to see here. So one layer of flattened cells, primary oocyte. That's a primordial follicle. That's a very immature follicle. That's going to progress into what's known as a primary oocyte and I'm sorry it's going to turn into a primary follicle which can still contains a primary oocyte and the only difference here you can see it's gotten a little bit bigger so that the flat cells turned into more cuboidal cells that's going that second that, sorry, that primary follicle is going to progress into a secondary follicle Here's where it gets tricky. The secondary follicle still contains a primary oocyte. You can see in this picture it looks completely different. So you, here's your primary oocyte, and you start to get this big fluid-filled space around it. This is called the antrum. And then in addition to that, you get this little clear ring around the oocyte. That's called a zona pellucida. And then a layer of cells right, so, right outside of that, that's called the corona radiata. So zona pellucida, corona radiata, and here's the antrum. Here's still your primary oocyte. The secondary follicles are going to progress into a mature follicle, and that would be the graphene follicle, sometimes called vesicular. It also looks different. It's going to look a lot like the secondary, but it is different. It's bigger, and it now contains a secondary oocyte, which means the egg is ready to go. So this is supposed to be a graphene follicle right here. So you can see it has the big antrum, corona radiata, zona pellucida, and a secondary oocyte, which is ready to be released. And when it's released, that's called ovulation. So that 
normally occurs about every 30 days. And here's just another picture of the follicles along with the oocytes. So after ovulation, so once that secondary oocyte is released, the rest of the follicle remains in the ovary and it's going to turn into something called the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum is important because it secretes some hormones. It secre secretes both progesterone and estrogen, but progesterone is really important in this stage of the cycle. So corpus luteum secretes progesterone and estrogen, and then it's going to eventually break down into what we call the corpus albicans. So it's not the corpus luteum won't hang around forever, and when it it'll eventually shrivel up and become the corpus albicans. So let's talk a little bit about oocytes. So I alluded to the fact that they progress from primary to secondary. And for our purposes, this really isn't overly important, but I just wanted you to kind of understand that there is a process here. So uh, we call it the process of a primary oocyte progressing to a secondary oocyte. It's called oogenesis. And when uh, females are, are born, there are a bunch of primary oocytes that are stuck in primordial follicles and that's they're going to stay like that until puberty hits so during puberty or about the time puberty happens the hypothalamus starts starts secreting a different hormone and remember how the hypothalamus controls the anterior pituitary gland so the hypothalamus secretes gonadotropin releasing hormone gonadotropin releasing hormone goes down the blood vessels to the anterior pituitary and stimulates the anterior pituitary to start releasing follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, which you've heard of before. And it does so in a cyclical monthly pattern. And as you can imagine, this follicle stimulating hormone is gonna drive those follicles to progress from primordial to primary to secondary to graphene. Luteinizing hormone is going to be responsible for stimulating ovulation. So if we look at a graph of these hormones, so according to the textbooks, 28 days, um, there are three phases to what we call the ovarian cycle. And there is a follicular phase. We'll say that's days 1 through 13. And what's going on in the follicular phase as you can imagine, the follicles are developing. So luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, namely follicle stimulating hormone, stimulate the primordial follicles to become primary, some primary to become secondary, and ideally one secondary becomes a mature graphene follicle. Then on day 14, we get ovulation. That's the, re the release of that secondary oocyte from the graphene follicle. And this is stimulated by a surge of luteinizing hormone. And if you follow this graph of the hormones, you can kind of see it. So FSH is elevated during this follicular phase, driving the follicles. Then around day 14, you're going to see this huge spike in luteinizing hormone, and that's going to stimulate ovulation. After ovulation, we go into what's called the luteal phase, and that's the remaining, uh, say, approximately two weeks. Uh, and that's when the corpus luteum is still in the ovary and it's secreting progesterone and estrogen. All right, so estrogen and progesterone are really important because they help build up the lining of the uterus. And remember the uterus is where the embryo is gonna start developing. So in cases where no fertilization takes place, so if there was no sperm to fertilize the oocyte, the corpus luteum is going to break down into the corpus albicans, and then if the corpus luteum is no longer there, there's not going to be as much estrogen and progesterone. Progesterone is really important for the uterine lining, so if the corpus luteum breaks down and you don't have that progesterone level up, uh, the lining of the uterus is going to come off, and that's what's known as menstruation. If fertilization takes place, on the other hand, it gets completely different. So... If fertilization takes place, and we'll talk about this uh, coming up, but fertilization normally takes place in the fallopian tubes, those tubes that connect the ovary to the uterus. Uh, 
and after fertilization takes place, the, the zygote goes to the uterus. And so that's what we're talking about, this pre-embryo. So fertilization takes place. This pre-embryo is going to implant into the lining of the uterus, and it's going to start secreting a hormone called human chorionic gonadotropin, or HCG. HCG basically stimulates the corpus luteum to hang around and keep secreting progesterone for another three months. So if you see where this is going, for the next three months, progesterone levels are still going to be high due to this HCG, and that's going to maintain the lining of the uterus, which would be obviously important for during pregnancy. After about three months, the corpus um, luteum will break down anyway, but at that point, the fetus is starting to produce its own hormones, and uh, the uterine lining can still remain intact. So you may have heard of HCG before. Uh, obviously, it has some uses, uses, but its most common use is to determine if, you're, if a female is pregnant. So a pregnancy test commonly screened for HCG. Because of its present in the body, that generally means that fertilization has taken place. So looking at the fallopian tubes or uterine tubes, so there are tubes that connect the uterus to the ovaries. They have cilia on the inside. The cilia is obviously important for moving the oocyte through the tube. So they're held in place by the broad ligament. That's this big thing here. Um, so like I was saying earlier, a secondary oocyte is generally fertilized in the fallopian tube and then goes to the uterus to implant into the uterine wall. So parts of the fallopian tube will come over here where you can see the different colors. So we have the infundibulum, which is this blue part. It has these little finger-like projections, and you can see them over here too. These are called fimbrae, and those kind of help guide the egg after ovulation into the tube. In this curved region called the ampulla, then we have this long region called the isthmus, and the part that go actually goes into the uterus is called the interstitial segment. So that is the fallopian tubes. So looking at the uterus, it opens to the fallopian tubes and also the vagina. Uh, it supports and nourishes the pre-embryo after implantation into the uterine wall. And there's different regions. So anatomically, these are the regions of the uterus. So you have the fundus, which is a big round region. You have the body, which is the main part. The isthmus, which is this kind of constricted region. And then the cervix is the bottommost part. So cervix is the inferior most part of the uterus. The cervix opens up into the vagina. So looking at the wall of the uterus, a lot of it is muscle, but so kind of going from outside to in, perimetrium on the outside, where all the smooth muscle is that allows it to contract, that's the myometrium, and that inner lining is the endometrium. The endometrium has two sublayers. The internal layer is called the functional layer and then just deep to that you have what's called a basal layer so the functional layer is called functional because that's the part that would actually come off during menstruation so relating all of this now to what's commonly known as the menstrual cycle we can divide the menstrual cycle still a 28 day cycle according to the textbooks uh, but the menstrual cycle has also has three phases. Remember, this is slightly different than the ovarian cycle, even though they work closely together. So the menstrual phase would be when that functional layer of the endometrium is sloughed off and it comes off. We'll say that's five days. After that, it starts building back, and we call that the proliferation phase. So that functional layer of the endometrium grows and gets thicker and thicker. We'll say that's days six through 14. And then days 15 through 28, secretory phase, uh, progesterone from the corpus luteum keeps uh, vascularizing the functional layer and it hel helps it grow. Now remember, if no fertilization takes place, that corpus luteum would become the corpus albicans, progesterone would drop, and the lining would come off, functional layer would come off, and that takes us back here to the menstrual phase. So if fertilization did take place, remember that HCG would uh, continue to maintain the lining of the uterus so you would not go into that menstrual phase. And here is a graph just kind of showing 
the estrogen and progesterone level. So estrogen's really going up as that functional layer grows here. And then again, you can clearly see here after ovulation, we get the corpus luteum. It's producing all this progesterone that helps maintain the lining of the uterus. And this kind of cor correlates the uterine cycle or menstrual cycle as we're talking about now to what we talked about earlier with the ovarian cycle. And we talked about this earlier. Again, no fertilization takes place. The corpus luteum breaks down, progesterone drops, menstrual phase begins. All right, and then these pictures kind of showing you the development of the follicle and ovulation, how it relates to these hormones, which we've seen before. It's the corpus luteum here, lots of progesterone. Here's the lining of the uterus. So you can see during the menstrual phase, it, the functional layer comes off. Then the proliferative, proliferative phase, it keeps growing back and gets thicker and thicker and thicker. And no fertilization, it would come off and it would, all, it would start all over again. All right, a few more things uh, for the female reproductive system. Uh, vagina connects the uterus to the outside of the body. It's aligned with non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Uh, there is a membranous barrier in young females called a hymen and it commonly uh, disintegrates or gets broken sometime in uh, childhood. And then the external genitalia, so just general terms to describe external genitalia in females, vulva is a term that's used, but specifically we have uh, the labia, which are these folds and uh, thickened folds of skin, so you have a major and minor. And the clitoris is the erectile body of the female, and that's right here.